What's up guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you the next Q&A video that you guys have all been waiting for. Uh, before we get started, don't forget to check out uh, the live attack video I've just uploaded. Uh, it's going to be from the uh, War Against Omega Lab, so uh, that will be uploaded by the time you're hearing this, so don't forget to check that out. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with some uh, general questions before we get into the nitty gritty uh, details of the game. So let's start with a uh, question from Bronze Goblin. Do you got fidget spinners? Uh, well, Bronze, I did have them one time, but it came around, hit me in the nose, got a bloody nose, um, and yeah, it, that didn't uh, turn out well, you know. Um, one of the downsides of, of being Jewish is having a, a nose that really sticks out there. Um, next question is from Pro Attacker. Pro Attacker uh, just asked, how old are you and how long have you been playing uh, Clash of Clans? Um, I, I think I've you know, mentioned this to you guys before. I've recently turned 18. I've been playing Clash of Clans since 8th grade year, so that's going to mean I was uh, 14 when I started playing, so I've been playing about uh, 4 years. Next question is from Jilu, Jilu Joe. Sorry if I mis mispronounced that. Uh, flat earther or not? Um, yeah, I am, a, I am a, a flat earther. I think, um, you know... The people often say, if the earth is flat, why haven't people sailed off it? And um, I just think, you know, we haven't gone far enough. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at any map, the earth is uh, definitely flat. Uh, Primetime Productions. Uh, this is a question that I, I, I do like. Why don't you uh, face cam? Um, well, the, the reason I, I, I don't usually face cam is because I don't want to reveal my identity to the uh, general public. I like going by my, uh, you know, gamer gamer tag, gamer name of Bisectatron. Um, you know, if who I was in... Um, the reason I do this is because the person I am in real life is uh, not somebody that I... Um, let's just say I enjoy being somebody else on this channel. Um, and, you know, everyone has their uh, everyday lives and everybody has their kind of exciting Clash of Clan lives. And I prefer, you know, going with the latter and not revealing my um, other identity. So um, if you do know what my, my you know, real name is, um, please uh, don't spread that information around. Uh, final question is from Nathaniel Kang. Nathaniel Kang uh, where are you going to college and what are you majoring in? Well, I uh, recently committed to the University of Washington. Uh, I'm planning on majoring in engineering, um, but you know, it's a it's competitive. So um, I'm I'm really thinking this is a good backup. You know, I would really love to do this for a living. But uh, college is a good, you know, good backup plan. You know, just like Chief Pat went to college, this started to take off. He dropped out. I'm hoping to do the same thing. All depends on you guys. Okay, so that's enough of him. That was my brother. Um, he wanted to take a few questions, so I let him have the first few minutes of the video. Um, if you were hoping for me to answer your my, your question, and my brother did, I apologize, but I gave him a chance just to get his voice out there on the channel. So. Hope you guys like that little intro bit. Let's get to the rest of the questions, though, um, more Clash of Clans related for the most part. We have so many questions I'm going to go through quickly. Don't want to make this a very long video because it takes forever to process if it does. Um, so I'm going to keep my answers short and concise, uh, but hopefully still give you guys the uh, the insight you're looking for. So um, let's get right into it, though. SF Raiden. Uh, Q&A. I am Raiden from the interview with a modder that you published around two years ago. Has your opinion on modding changed or not since then? Also, good luck with your second channel. Um, well, thank you for the that last bit. Um, I do remember my interview with you uh, that happened a few years ago. I interviewed Raiden, who is an open modder, and I basically kind of got some insight into why he does it um, and what he gets from modding and from Clash of Clans uh, with that 
uh, style of play. And my view has always kind of been, I don't agree with how they do it, but it's nothing personal. I'll have them on my channel once in a while, you know, ask them a few questions. Um, so it's, it's not like I personally dislike people that mod. I just don't agree with how they do it. I don't think it's fun. I would never do it. Um, even if I knew I could get away with it, there'd be no reason because it's just not fun if you already know that uh, you're going to be successful. And it also will take forever to, cr to crack the bases and stuff. just doesn't seem like a way I would, I would want to play. But um, to each their own, as long as you stay out of CWL and the fair play leagues, I'm fine with people uh, modding. I mean... I, th I wish it wasn't in the game, but I'm fine with people personally. Uh, I don't I don't hate you for modding. I just wish it wasn't uh, a part of the fair play leagues that we're in. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question. This is Patrick and Tammy Campbell. Why are you guys not fam with other One Hive clans? Uh, the One Hive uh, clan family started with the original One Hive clan. Um, it's just called One Hive. Then they added more clans, such as One Hive Genesis, One Hive 2.0. And as they added clans, those clans branched off and wanted to become their own lead clans. Uh, differences in opinion sometimes, but when the clan gets so big, it's hard to administrate an entire, like, hundreds of people. So it's natural that they split up, no hard feelings. Uh, there's three different families now, the original One Hive, the One Hive 2.0 family, and the family I'm in, the One Hive Genesis, One Hive Alpha family. Uh, next question is from Mahamoud Baranbo. Uh, long question. Here we go. Q&A. Hello, Bisectatron. I'm a fresh Town Hall 10. Just finished upgrading the TH. Can you give me some tips on what to focus on for upgrading uh, in the lab, which buildings I should upgrade, and if you think I should go ahead for 9.5 for a little while or not? Maybe you can make a video or just give your thoughts. Uh, thanks. So, good question. Um... I might make a video, but I'll address it now. Uh, once you're a fresh Town Hall 10, you your first priority is making sure you're able to three-star Town Hall 9s consistently, like it's a it's a given that you'll three-star them um, to be able to dip down. That's your first priority, so upgrade uh, Valks and anything else you think, possibly bowlers, get the bowlers, get them upgraded, um, stuff like that that's going to make it so you can easily dip down on Town Hall 9. That's the first thing you're going to do. Next, you're going to try to two-star Town Hall 11s, assuming you face Town Hall 11s in your wars. That's the next hardest thing as a Town Hall 10 to do. So um, you want to upgrade, again, Valks and Bowlers, both two-star troops, also your Dragons. Um, be able to two-star Town Hall 11s, assuming it's something you come up against. Then finally, upgrade your three-star troops like Hogs and Laloon. Um, to be able to three-star Town Hall 10s. But that's the last thing you do. Um, upgrade your troops first. The heroes aren't quite as much of a priority. Of course, get your queen to 40 before you even touch your king. That's my recommendation. And um, in terms of being a 9.5, maybe a month or two, but get those infernos down pretty quickly, especially if you're doing competitive wars. People don't want to do an arranged war against a 9.5. Next question is from... Patriot Tyson, are you going to make more videos about SpaceX, Blue Origins, and the colonization of Mars? Um, he's referring to my second channel, Exploring Space, and yes, I do plan to cover all of that on my channel. It's something very interesting in astronomy and um, uh, astrobiology right now, so I'm uh, definitely going to be covering that, and I encourage you guys to check out my second channel, which I upload on um, twice a week, give or take. Um, just got back into it. All right, next question, uh, Zekozo, I'm not sure if that was meant to be said as a word. Uh, what cla non-class related YouTubers do you watch? I'm not loyal to a whole lot of channels um, in terms of being a subscriber. One I do want to shout out, it's a huge channel, some of you guys might have already uh, heard about it before. It's called Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. Um, just type in K-U-R-Z onto YouTube, the search, and Kurzgesagt will come up. They make science videos very, very, very high quality videos, um, really interesting stuff, at least for me. So that's one channel. I also watch, you know, like Dude Perfect a little bit, um, political stuff, Shark Tank, um, lots of t like TV bits that I don't want to watch on TV, I watch on YouTube. So I'm not really loyal to a whole lot of YouTubers besides some of the big channels like those. Okay, let's keep moving here. We have um, Clash with Mus Musa Tube. Uh, Q&A, can you show us a bit of your setup? I assume uh, you, mean, you mean my gaming setup and uh, 
really it's just my laptop, a USB microphone, and my phone that's connected to my laptop uh, through the lightning cable. It's an iPhone, so you can use QuickTime Player to record just those three things. Not much to show. I'm not a fancy uh, tech guy, so that, that would be about it. So I guess I'm not going to show it, uh, no. Um, moving on to Lord Call, or Lord Cal. Um, Clash of Clans related. If you are a Town Hall 9, is it better to upgrade the Queen to mid-level and leave your King at 10 until your Queen reaches high level, or both along the way equally? Um, from kind of a practical farming perspective, it makes sense to upgrade them um, with each other uh, like uh, equally along the way because it'll get to the point where upgrading your queen, for example, will cost so much more than your king that it would just make sense to do your king. It would be much more efficient for farming. But if you don't want to take farming into account, which maybe you don't, I would still say upgrade them both um, five at a time is my rule. So um, upgrade your queen to 15 once she's 10, of course. Upgrade her from 1 all the way to 15 once you become a Town Hall 9. Then do your king up to 15, then queen to 20, then king to 20. So do five upgrades to get that new ability level for each hero, doing your queen first, then following with your king, only going up um, five upgrades, then switching and doing the other one. And I think that's the most effective way to do it. Uh, I don't like having a really high level queen and a low level king because both are important for attacks and your attacks would be kind of weird and it would be difficult to use standard strategies because um, they typically rely on heroes being pretty equal level. So my recommendation just personally is to do them both equally. Uh, next question is Sarthak Saha. Uh, I think, question, after Loon nerfs and the witch bug fix, is Town Hall 9 back again in the CWL meta? Um, I, you're kind of implying that Town Hall 9 was never, or was taken out, and uh, maybe it was. I mean, Town Hall 9, I think, is at a point, and I think it still is to a certain extent, where um, it's, it's important, and the Town Hall 9s have to show up and get the job done. But most top clans can uh, get the Town Hall 9s 3-starred with attacks to spare to use as scouts. And the scouts aren't terribly important. They do help. Um, and they can lead to a Town Hall 10 uh, difference in terms of getting more Town Hall 10 3-stars or something. But I think Town Hall 9 is not like going to be hugely changed by the Loon nerf or the Witch Bug and all that stuff. I think that... Or the Witch Bug fix. I think that... Um, it's pretty much still where it was. An a important town hall level, as all CWL uh, town hall levels are, but not nearly as decisive in the war as the 10s and 11s. Okay, we have Davon. What do dead zones do exactly? Um, a dead zone is a part of the base, in the middle of the base typically, where there's just nothing. There's just empty space with wall pieces to prevent troops from being dropped there, and they break up a push through the base, so to defend like a big, uh, heavy kill squad push from one side to the other, they make it difficult because the troops path around in like a circle rather than cutting across the middle of the base. Uh, but there are ways to exploit it, of course, too. Uh, moving on, Yonatan Gale, how viable is HGHB and what kind of bases is it good for if it's still an option? I'd say it's actually still a pretty decent option from what I've seen. Um, it's just I'm surprised it's not used as much actually. And also HGHP with the P.E.K.K.A.s, maybe we'll see that more, especially with the level 6 P.E.K.K.A. being added. So now Town Hall 9s could bring a level 6 P.E.K.K.A. in their CC. Um, something to keep in mind there. But in terms of the bowler version, HGHB, um, it's good for bases where the queen is offset and if the king is also offset, even better. So you can take out both the heroes early on. And also you can predict the giant pathing so they won't beat through a random wall and go to a weird place. You can predict where they'll go. And also not many air defenses in that area to shoot down the healers before your troops take them out. Those are the main things I would say. Dark's Big Bone. Q&A. Since you're in the Supercell uh, NDA, uh, is using two accounts or more against terms of service does it get you banned, and is there a way to avoid that? Um, okay, from what I know, there's not much being enforced against having two accounts. And for, I, for what I think, I think you're fine if you're using one account like on your phone, one account on your iPad. That's not against terms of service. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I don't think that is. I think the problem is when you're having uh, two accounts 
being each put on one device, so you're switching back and forth between accounts. And even more uh, against terms of service, if that can be a thing, is account sharing. That's the main thing that they don't like, where you're using other people's accounts, there's multiple people on one account uh, sharing it. So that is against terms of service, but as far as I know, no one's really getting banned for that. It's mainly for using uh, third-party software like modding and stuff. Um, not People I don't think are being banned for that, but let me know if I'm wrong there. Okay, right along here, Klaus Peter Zayer. Zayer, what is your favorite member in One Hive Genesis? I gotta say, Smog, um, great guy, good leader, and very positive, keeps the clan upbeat. Noraldine Alhawari, sorry if I said that wrong. Why don't you live stream wars? Well, tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon rather, uh, you'll get the uh, the live stream you've been waiting for. I might do it more often. I haven't done it for. Uh, a while because I just it's it's a lot to to commit to it's a lot more convenient to make videos but I think I might try it sometime tomorrow and maybe a regular thing in the future if it goes well doom coc um, Q&A what are your thoughts on the numbers of bands and CWO clans that were in playoffs I think it's unfortunate but it's just evident of when something gets popular and there's a lot of recognition involved people are wanting going to want to get that recognition um, at all means necessary, even if they're cheating, they want to look like a fair play player who's really good, but um, it's like taking performance enhancing drugs, kind of. There's definitely an incentive to do it, even if it's, if it's not the most ethical thing to do. So it's kind of unfortunate, but hopefully it gets taken care of more in the future in terms of preventing it. All right, uh, War Freak, Q&A, will you continue with base identification videos? Yes, I, I will. Sorry I haven't done that many lately. I'll continue with that for sure, as well as attack meta videos. Those are two series I want to continue for sure. Uh, Pixel Coin, how can I do a valuable queen walk and how can I identify one? It's mainly just looking at the cost-benefit analysis, if I can say that. So what are you going to invest? What are you going to get out of it? Um, look for how many rages you'll have to use on your queen, how many healers versus how many point defense and splash damage you can take out. So see if she'd be more valuable with the troop space and spells for the walk versus adding her to the kill squad or doing a suicide queen charge or something like that. Uh, that's the quick answer, but you can, of course, look up tutorials on YouTube for more details if you want. Uh, Q&A, will you be making a new TH10 base building Video covering the new meta and how to defend it, uh, Kevin Gonzalez. Yes, I will. Once things are more clear what the powerful strategies are, and we've had some time for the dust to settle, I'll definitely cover how to defend the attack meta. But first I have to identify the attack meta, and I still haven't quite done that yet. We'll see how Town Hall 10 develops. It's going to be very interesting. Saptarshi Das. Uh, hi, nice video. Can you make more on different ways to deal with Inferno Towers? As uh, for the Q&A, wouldn't it be better if Supercell made war matchup based on town hall levels and not defenses? Uh, yes, I plan on making more videos about dealing with Infernos because they're so important uh, to think about at Town Hall 10. So yeah, um, sometime in the future, more stuff on that. Um, for your Q&A question, of course it would be better um, if Supercell adjusted the matchmaking system, but let's keep in mind it's very, uh, it's been fine-tuned a lot. There's a lot that goes into it, and it's not terrible. I mean, a lot of clans do face engineered clans. That's the main issue. So clans that aren't doing arranged wars or leagues like Genesis are facing uh, in their random matchups, and even one Hive Genesis and other clans that are in leagues, when we're searching random matchups, which we do oftentimes in the, throughout the week, uh, we do face engineered clans, and it sucks because they have an unfair advantage. So yes, I'd like to see, maybe not based on town hall levels, because you get a max town hall level versus a newly upgraded town hall level. Maybe you have two weights. This has been said before. I can't remember who said it. Uh, two weights. One uh, is your defensive weight, one your offensive. Whichever is higher is the one that goes into the algorithm. A possible solution, but I think a tweak would be nice to stop the engineered uh, problem. Okay, getting down to the end here. Uh, last few, Mr. Vinko. What are some essential things to keep track of while doing the Bow Witch at Town Hall 10? I watch a lot of videos, follow the strategies, but my bowlers just melt halfway through. Yeah, it's definitely an, an, an issue because you see the attacks on YouTube that are successful, then you try it and it's like the exact same thing, yet somehow all the bowlers die. I know exactly what you're saying, it's happened to me. I'd say um, just be aware of giant bombs and inferno towers because bowlers are very fragile troops. They're 
not don't have much more HP than like a wizard, for example. So you got to take care of them, whether it's using a heal spell or even a free spell and a heal spell to get the Inferno off them, get them healed up. Um, maybe can't invest quite as much in the jumps and rages. Uh, you got to try to balance those spells out. It's tricky, um, but just roll with it. Sometimes maybe do a queen walk uh, around the outside so you only have to do witches on one side of the base because oftentimes a lava hound in the CC isn't worth sending your queen in to shoot down. So uh, different factors. I'll probably do a more in-depth video on that strategy soon because it's easy to show attacks but it's harder to show attacks that work and don't work and talk about why they work and why they didn't work. But I'll do that type of video sometime. Okay, uh, last two. Floria Vlad. Q&A, can I join any one hive clan with level 30 heroes, almost max, town 9 base, defensive uh, defenses, walls, and with 400 war stars? Uh, the war stars might be a little bit low, but regardless, yeah, uh, you can join, you can at least try out for any one hive clan. Uh, tryouts come before you're a permanent member, but uh, um, for one hive alpha, one hive genesis for sure, I can't speak for the other one hive families, but I'm sure you'd get a tryout in them as well. Uh, but at least for Genesis and Alpha, uh, feel free to apply if you're interested. Okay, uh, last one for the day. I'm a, Amir Shayan KB. Q&A. Hi, as you might know, the Town Hall 10 tier system has been revamped, um, and that mostly affects Tier 1. There are many Town Hall 9s that are currently upgrading to max Tier 1, but I have no idea what we're going to face and what are the first steps that we need to know. Uh, please help us. Okay, uh, good question. The tier system has been changed. I have to admit to not knowing much about it. I'm a max Town Hall 10, just about max now, so it doesn't really affect me. I'm top tier no matter what, but um, I think the system, you're right, has been changed for lower tiers, and my recommendation is go online or on the CWL uh, Twitter, or whatever, wherever they have the information. It's probably not that hard to find, and see what carries weight and then get to the top of your tier as quickly as possible. So once you're a tier one, get to max tier one, so right at the border between one and two, then hang out there for a little while, upgrade your offense. Then once you become tier two, get to the top of tier two as quickly as possible. That way when you match a opposing clan and the tiers are matching up, you're not gonna have a base across from you that's higher level because you'll be the top of your tier, so you'll be the, the highest possible you can be for that tier. That's my recommendation, just know what carries weight, what doesn't, and uh, I wish I could give you more information, but that's pretty much all I can say. Anyway, that will do it for the Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't drop questions in this video. Um, you can ask questions in uh, later videos. I'll tell you guys when I'm gonna be recording my next Q&A, and that's when you drop the questions so they're more updated and more current so just be on the lookout every two weeks i think i want to do this series so it'll be a little bit uh, of a wait but um hold on to those questions and i'll tell you when i'm doing the next q a thank you so much for watching this one and don't forget we have the stream tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon I keep saying morning tomorrow afternoon 1 1 p.m pacific time a lot of talking in this video my voice is sore but that'll do it and i'll see you guys later bisectatron out